Katie, um, what studio are you in now? I work at Mount Crushmore Studios in Philadelphia. And she keeps those guys in line, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I try. <laughs> okay. Ladies' current work is represented at the Ruckus Gallery in Philadelphia. Let's have a big hand for Katie. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone, I'm Katie Severance, and Dennis just did a good job introducing me. I would like to give Dennis some praise back because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be a glass blower. <laughs> okay. So I was asked to do a lathe demonstration that combined artistic flame working with scientific flame working, and I chose to do, this is the piece that I'm going to make today. It's my take on a coil condenser, which is a very common apparatus that the scientific students here would be practicing. Um, the first step to making a coil condenser is you would usually use a hollow tube and you would bend it into a coil and then you would seal it inside of a jacket. Here, I just coiled up some solid rod and I sculpted a rose and sealed it inside the tube. On a normal coil condenser that's actually meant to function as a piece of scientific apparatus, this would be hollow and these two leaves would be a hose connection or a hose barb, a hollow little um, attachment on both sides. Here, I just put some leaves, just because. So, this is what I'm gonna make. I'm gonna use a, a big, bushy, annealing sort of flame, and it's gonna be kinda loud, so bear with me, please. Also, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm just going to let gravity take that little excess away that I don't need. So that is essentially how you turn a coil. I have one here that's cool that I'm going to pass around. Most of the scientific students probably already have experience with them, but if you're not, a scientific glass blower, coils are really cool. I already prepped up my rose coil that I'm gonna seal inside here, but had I more time to demo, you would have seen me do what I just did here, but with my colored rod, and I flame worked a little rose and sealed that onto the end of my coil, which I have in the cone here. So 
So I'm going to seal this, bring this over to the lathe, and go ahead and start getting it ready to go inside this jacket. Make sure you dust off all the kiln brick. It's never good. You don't want that in any of your seals. What I'm going to do is I'm going to warm this tube in just a little bit. So condensers are something when I worked in scientific industry and also when I was in school here at Salem in the scientific program, there's all different types of condensers. And they all do the same thing. They condense vapors back into a liquid, but all by different means. I'm making an artistic version of a coil condenser, which condenses vapor via the coil column inside. There's also an Allen condenser, which the inner workings would look more like a series of bulbs. And uh, as vapor passes through the constrictions within an Allen condenser, the thin points are what forces the vapors to condense. And they're all used, all the condensers are used in various forms of distillation and other reactions within a lab. And no matter what kind of condenser it is, they're all pretty fun to make. You can make them on a torch, you can make them on a lathe. The lathe is a lot quicker, a little bit easier, but no matter what way you do them, they're usually fun. I'm going to start by tagging this far end of the inner coil. Make sure that I get a nice weld there. I'm working with standard wall, so it drooped in on me a little bit. It got a little too hot. That's okay. When you get distracted sometimes and you're not paying attention to your glass, it cracks. But you know what to do, you can fix it. <laughs> this will make for a feistier demo. Since I took a little bit too long without flame annealing that seal that I just did, it popped on me. So because of there you go. So to heal a crack, I start with a super reducing flame that lays on a lot of black soot. And the black soot is your friend because it makes a nice blanket around your crack and keeps it nice and cozy warm. So then when you're ready to change to a little bit more oxidizing flame, sometimes you can watch a crack just disappear. If you get it nice and warm, with this uh, sooty flame, it makes it really easy to heal your crack. So now I'm going to up my oxygen a little bit here. Not too much because I have not sealed in this other end. I don't want it to start to move on me, but I want to keep it happy. Until I can get this other end sealed in, I can go back on this with the flame it needs to really seal that crack in. For right now, while I have it nice and sooted, I'm going to go in for this other seal. Let's see if we can do it. Move this here, keep that guy happy. If 
Got that tagged. Pretty good. Come up from underneath. Let gravity pull it all down. And keep that seal hot so it doesn't crack on us too. <laughs> So right now, even though I still have under this soot, I do still have a little bit of a crack, I'm going to try to close off this jacket and seal on the joint on the opposite end. It will give me a lot more stability for going in and fixing this, this crack at the far end. So I'm going to get my joint ready. this keep both seals happy right so now I'm going to fire cut this joint afternoon I was chatting with my old boss Dave Sertum of Chemglass about how not until I left scientific industry did I realize how much skill I actually gained from doing production work on a daily basis. Little things like fire cutting a joint to the appropriate size hole that you want to seal it to without having to measure it or flat bottoming something at a certain length without having to like measure or think about it. Little tips like that that you pick up and just doing something over and over again and practicing. They're so valuable. But I didn't I didn't realize it until I was out of the industry that these were the things that I was learning and I'm so thankful that I did work in the industry for the time that I did because I learned so much. Heard a big crack. I'm not scared. So I still have that big crack in the other end. I didn't leave myself too much room on this end to seal a joint, but I'm still gonna wrangle it. I was trying to do a round bottom on this end and I didn't have any pressure and uh, my blow hose popped off on that end. I fixed it. Super close to my sculpture inside, but we're gonna go with it. These are my tweezer jacks. They're literally just a pair of tweezers that I got hot in flame and twisted the blades 
to the opposite axis they once were, and they use them as a baby pair of jacks. They're super handy. I keep a block of beeswax on my lathe bench and on my torch to use these with. I also have a brass reamer I use for a lot of applications um, that I use the beeswax for, which is kind of different. I don't know too many people that work on a lathe that use beeswax or jacks. I'm gonna bring this jacket over slowly. Okay, this is gonna work out. We got this. So right now I have a crack at both seals. Since this seal is so hot, I'm gonna work from this end down and try and heal everything. We'll see how it goes. I got a little bit of divot from that seal that I just did because my bunch is too hot. Let's turn it down. Get the divot out of here. Get this end suited up, and then we'll up our oxygen. And we'll see if we can make nice. So, I healed this crack, and I'm gonna try and get the jacket to not look so warped. I'll go back and resize a little bit. still a little bit wonky. I'm just going to move on and run this bushy flame from the hot end down to where the Bunsen burner is at this other crack. I'm much more so worried about this crack. Looks like I got this crack out. I'm really starting to crank my oxygen into this flame and I can, I'm watching part of the crack disappear. I doubt this one's going to go away completely because it was kind of bad. But hey, at least it's not in two pieces, right? And a little bit more oxygen. Get it really pretty hot.
clean it out a little bit. And then we'll add on the leaves that are the faux clothes bars. That might seem a little bit boring, but to be honest, some of the biggest victories as a glass blower are not what you make, but what you can fix. So. <laughs> back in with a tighter flame directly on that seal while it's facing upward and just let the jacket fall down on it. I blew it out a little bit and it looks like it needs some love. A little bit. Just in the middle. Clean it out. Alright, I'm going to turn my Bunsen down, keep it on the end that I'm not working on, some air, on there pretty good. I'm going to take it off the pony here. Okay, everyone, that was it. <laughs> you can stick it. Ready? Okay. Hi, Tom. Hi, it's me, Katie. You guys saw a lot of flame annealing today. <laughs> <laughs>